Hi there, Gary Fong here, and um, want to do the quickest possible demonstration of the radio popper system because um, you don't have a lot of time to wait. Okay, so it consists of two pieces. This is the transmitter and this is the receiver. Now, um, when I first got the kit, I was really confused because all slaves, uh, like this one, have um, a hot shoe, which of course then controls the um, uh, the flash and, and the remote and everything like that. But, you know, when I got this one, it's just like, wait, there's no hot shoe, so how does this talk to anything? So, this is how it works. On the transmitter, and this is really interesting, you mount it on top of your camera flash, like this. Um, typically, they like to say, have the butt end of your, um, uh, this thing, and it's they give you Velcro against the print just so that you have some room here. Um, okay, so it, it mounts like that with the antenna in front. Okay, so anyway, weird. So that's the transmitter. And what it does is it receives a pulse from this guy and it just broadcasts out the radio pulse. Now, there's an this is infrared. Okay, so infrared uh, to infrared requires because that's light it requires line of sight that means these two sensors have to be pointed toward each other which is really tough to do and then also if you're outdoors um, you know they're not going to see each other at a distance radio on the other hand goes around corners because it's sound radio sound and it hits walls and it goes around corners so you literally could hide the um, the red parts from each other and it'll still go so on the receiving end and this is something that was previously not known to me. So this is the receiver, okay? And you know which one's the receiver because it has a flexible antenna. And it's got this odd little foot here. Now, this foot goes into this base. And this is really important. You think, oh, well, it's just nothing but a stand, you know, and it's just going to hold the thing up. No, that's not how it works. And I'll, and I'll explain that. Step one is to, first of all, read the copy that's on the back of this guy. So um, I think you can see it. Let me angle it. So you see there's different flash. Uh, this one's for Canon, so it's built to have uh, the Canon ones, but it says 580X and then different flashes. Now the reason why it has different steps is because it's going to place this eye right here. See that eye? It's going to place it smack over the, um, radi the um, infrared pulse that comes out of the flash in this black area that you can't even see. It's weird. Okay, now this is really important. You got to make sure these slots are correct and you could easily read it wrong. So like what I did is it drove me nuts but I put it in the wrong slot because I thought the 580EX was 430EX was the top, the top slot. I thought that was the top slot. It actually is way the heck up here. Okay, so now that you have this You've got this eye mounted on this guy, and now here's where your flash comes in. Your flash gets mounted like this, okay? So, as, as strange as this sounds, this is exactly how the thing works. Do you see? I'll, I'll spin it around. Do you see this little, uh, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, there's a, there's a little foam eye, and it literally uh, covers the light, so you cover the infrared so that it can only get the uh, uh, because if it gets the infrared it's going to confuse it and it's going to it's going to pop only by the infrared and you want to go radio as in radio popper so that's that make sure that 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 little um, this little eyeball goes right over this black area which looks like nothing but there's a little little guy in there and um, and then you uh, turn on your receiver. Now, to turn on the receiver, you just hold the power button, like hold it down, and then it'll turn on. Okay, so that amber light will go and it'll tell you it's ready, ready to receive. Now, on the camera itself, it has the uh, transmitter, again, which is the pulse, and you basically just turn it on and it will search for the channels for you. Um, there's there's a lot of different menu commands that you can use to select channels, custom, and everything like that. But the Radio Popper does a lot of that automatically. So this uh, will just go ahead and um, pop from the top of your camera uh, 
with the flash mounted to anything else around corners or whatever. Now, having said that, I need to explain that there are no controls on the radio popper itself for channel, for group, for ratios, anything like that. What it does is it listens to your master commander, which is of course the topic of another video that I have, but the master commander, uh, which would be on here, um, you know, when you put it on master mode, um, you just go like that and then hold down the zoom button. Uh, for about five seconds, three, four, five, and then you see how it says off. We're just going to go turn it to on right there, okay? And then that's that. Now, you see this little lightning bolt here? Uh, I mean, the little uh, flash icon that's in front of the uh, sorry, in front of the flash. That means this flash is on, and we definitely don't want that because that will figure into the calculation. So I'm going to hold down the zoom button. And then you see we're just going to go hold the zoom button many times. And then this select button until, so now it's going to, you see where it says on and this guy is kind of blinking. I'm just going to turn it one time to off. Press the enter button. And now it's off. Okay, and then um, by holding down the zoom button here, we can choose, you know, groups or channels or things like that uh, to talk to the other guys. But then what happens is that the radio popper must use the Canon electronics. And um, so that means that you have to do basically what the Canon would require under the regular uh, infrared mode. So all it does is it basically takes your infrared mode, uh, your Canon wireless, uh, on Nikon, they actually have one for the pop-up flash, which, which is really kind of interesting. Um, but again, then, you know, same thing here, like on a 430EX or whatever, you're just going to turn it into slave mode by holding down uh, the zoom button for quite a while, and then it'll go to the different modes. Um, and then you'll put this on slave. So make sure that the channel and the group are exactly what you want, and then, um, and then put this anywhere you like and then just use the controls as you typically would on the Canon. Uh, the one thing that I do want to explain is the Canon wireless system is quite complicated. Uh, it takes quite a bit of knowledge to learn, I mean, you know, to hold the zoom button down for five seconds. Who would, who would think that? It's not intuitive. The um, 600 EXRT uh, is much better at that because it has menus. Um, and then also what's cool uh, about the radio poppers, if you use it outside and at a fairly close distance, of course, you can hit the um, high speed button and then the high speed, well, th this is on slave, that's not going to make sense. You hit the high speed on the master controller, uh, but the high speed will allow you to do uh, sync on your uh, remote flash at up to one eight thousandth of a second. Okay, so that's the mystery of the radio popper. Again, um, it, it doesn't have a hot shoe. Oh, and this stand here, you might go, well, why is it a stand? It has a quarter twenty uh, socket on it. So it would work really nice with a tripod. Uh, if you have a light stand, you're going to need a, a light stand with a tripod converter uh, to make it use uh, useful for you. Okay, so hope that helps. Bye.